Welcome to our channel where we talk about the core knowledge needed in various specialization within the field of traffic operations. Majority of the content in this video is written by Professor Jiangling Wu. My name is Amit Kumar Singh. I am a licensed engineer in the state of Texas. I received my bachelor's degree from IIT Bombay in India and my master's degree from UT Austin. Other contributors of this work include Prensu Singh, an artificial intelligence engineer, Nidhi Kumari, a computer science engineer, and Namrita Kumari, a data science engineer. Now let's get to the main content of this video. In previous videos, as a part of chapter 3, we have looked into a travel demand modeling, which is an specialization in the field of traffic operations. Um, in this video, we will look at another very important and interesting topic of roadway safety. Roadway safety is another specialization within the traffic operations. Uh, we have tried to structure the chapter in a way that our different specializations are covered within a different chapter or different video series. So typically, as we grow in our career, uh, let's say we are 15 years in, in our career, we we typically focus majority of our time in certain field of specialization. So for example, uh, some senior engineers uh, would focus mostly on the roadway safety and some senior engineers would focus mostly on travel demand modeling and so on. So we have tried to cover uh, different specialization under different chapters. Roadway safety is one of the top priorities of transportation agencies these days and the importance of roadway safety projects and tasks uh, is going to increase in near future and in the long term as well. There is an increased focus on roadway safety uh, from different levels and from different perspective which we will look into this video series. Before starting this chapter, I am happy to share that I have recently received my road safety professional level 1 certification which is also called RSP certification. Roadway crashes occur due to numerous combination of factors uh, that are related to drivers, passengers, roadway, environment and vehicles. So there can be a lot of factors that are related to drivers uh, which I try to write here. Um, for example, driver's age, uh, driver's state, whether driver was intoxicated or not, whether driver was sleepy, driver was using his or her cell phone. Then uh, related to passengers, the same attribute of drivers can also be applied to uh, passengers. Then roadways, whether the roadway has the median or shoulder, what kind of median barrier was there, uh, if, if there was, and what kind of clearance was there on the right hand side, if it's a runoff crash. What, what are the roadway conditions, for example, horizontal curve, vertical curve, all those uh, comes under a roadway. Then environment conditions, whether it was raining, foggy, what was, how was the visibility, wind speed and many other things can come under environment and vehicles, what was the vehicle's condition, make and model of the vehicle and whether heavy truck was involved. So there are over let's say around 20 or more factors for each, each of the each of these factors for one single crash that are typically available uh, usually it's more than 20 so I have seen overall the number of factors we see on a single crash data is around uh, 200 or more so overall we we can look at 200 or more different aspect of a single crash and when we have when we are studying on a bigger roadway then we have let's say we are studying hundreds of crashes then we have a lot of factors to study another important thing is uh, these uh, factors along with uh, the combination of these factors so for example uh, young driver maybe uh, combining with let's say horizontal curve so maybe a young driver who was speeding and there was a combination of horizontal curve where he run, uh, run off the road so different combination of these factors uh, play a big role in uh, in a single crash so when we study the crashes uh, due to complexity of many factors involved roadway safety studies are very complex usually for 
uh, traffic studies or traffic design or roadway design when we work on projects we kind of have an idea on what to expect as an output and there is a lot of work that goes uh, engineering work that goes behind it however uh, in the roadway safety is more of an exploration field where we collect the crash data and then we try to look into what are the things that are happening how they are happening and there are many tools that helps us to identify uh, those issues so i can say roadway safety is not kind of a field where you know going in more or less what to expect uh, we go in and look in the data uh, we do many kind of analysis and also cross analysis among various factors to figure out uh, what kind of safety issues that are, are there for our projects through this road safety studies we are looking to reduce the overall total number of crashes and the severity of crashes roadway safety is an interdisciplinary field uh, which we will look in the next section with a wealth of knowledge available in the field uh, there is a lot of research there are a lot of papers and there is a lot of knowledge available in the field although a comprehensive knowledge of safety concept is favorable for safety analysis most of the engineering tasks for roadway safety requires the knowledge of few key concepts and approaches so i kind of wanted to stop here and discuss few things so roadway safety involves a lot of different disciplines which we will look in the next section there are hundreds of thousands of documents that we can read through and and kind of uh, use those documents to come come up with a safety safety approach however uh, reading through so many documents for for projects is kind of impractical uh, usually safety budgets are limited and time are limited there are some core concepts that are used in safety analysis especially for the roadway projects so usually safety projects are done as a part of roadway design project projects so we will br briefly look at how safety is an interdisciplinary field and I kind of wanted to emphasize that if if we are looking for safety studies and if you are looking for like online lecture there is an endless amount of knowledge available endless is a strong word but it kind of feels like that you can spend five to ten years of your life reading through these documents and there will still not be enough so roadway safety is kind of a open field where there is a lot of research that is constantly going on thousands and thousands of research paper and publications has been out and we kind of need to understand uh, most of the concepts that are covered in the safety kind of mainline uh, work however there are some core concepts that can be used for mostly roadway design projects and it can cover 80 percent of our work so in author's experience uh, we will look at only the core concepts in the in this chapter and uh, that based on our personal experience we feel that it will be enough to complete 80 percent of our, of our work by no means it will be enough to uh, complete any roadway safety projects from start to end uh, the standalone projects but it would be enough to cover 80 percent of roadway projects and cover 80 percent of that task like i mentioned a roadway safety is a multidisciplinary field so it's also a multi-agency approach related to four emphasis area uh, one of them is engineering then education enforcement and emergency response so these are four important emphasis area of roadway safety engineering is one of them then there is education which is public education uh, enforcement law enforcement and emergency response so out of uh, when we are talking about roadway safety is kind of very important to remember that it's, it's not only about the engineering or the analysis we are doing uh, that's that's not the whole picture actually engineering is a very small part of the roadway safety culture 
um, that we are trying to emphasize and trying to improve upon. So all four emphasis area are crucial to roadway safety. Engineering is a small but crucial part of roadway safety. So it's kind of important to remember that engineering is not everything within the roadway safety. Um, majority of the efforts are kind of related around emergency responses because they are the first responder who respond to the crash and depending on how fast they can respond uh, the outcome of the crash may change uh, so all four components are very important and for this because we are working in engineering field we will look at the engineering aspect of it however it's, it's, it's very important to remember that it's not the entire story out of the engineering field there are two approaches to roadway safety one is called nominal safety which has been traditionally done over the last 20 30 40 years it, nominal safety is meeting the design criteria so which is let me write them out which is uh, for us it is asto green book asto green book has roadway design criteria uh, which we are required to learn uh, for our PE license and uh, then some design criteria for signal designs or pavement marking and, and many other things are given in MUTCD. These are national guidelines, state have their own guidelines and these guidelines are actually required by law so these are legal guidelines and engineers must follow them and seal and sign. So these are like legal guidelines so meeting these guidelines and um, these guidelines are written in a way that it ensures some level of safety so those that's called nominal safety just meeting the standard uh, guidelines or which are also legal guidelines related to roadway pavement marking signage and many other things then there is something called substantive safety substantive safety looks at the crash pattern and try to figure out why the crashes are happening and whether we can reduce them or whether we should be expecting that many crashes so substantive safety focuses on reducing the number and severity of crashes over a long period of time this can be different countermeasures or different safety approaches that are part of nominal safety or maybe it is some of them are uh, outside of nominal safety as well so in substantive safety approach where we do the safety studies exclusively uh, compared to nominal safety which is embedded inside this uh, guidelines uh, which is green book MATCD and state guidelines so substantive safety has three different approaches one first one is descriptive safety analysis which we will look uh, soon um, descriptive safety analysis is basically looking through the crash data and trying to figure out what has happened historically what factors has led to crashes in the past predictive safety analysis is has become a very powerful tool where which gives us ab ability to map the roadway features and try to predict how many crashes we are expecting under different roadway conditions let's say if we reduce the shoulder width by certain percentage how, what will be the impact on total number of crashes so predictive safety analysis is not limited to historical uh, data we can predict an alternate design that is not even built yet we can uh, figure out total number of crashes for future however there are some uh, limitations to this and we will discuss in depth on how the predictive safety analysis work what are some of the common things we need to remember while ap applying predictive safety analysis next one that has recently been a big uh, tool for safety analysis is surrogate safety analysis or also known as video analytics safety analysis video analytics safety so in this uh, approach what we do is we go and record the video for let's say uh, a minimum of a day to a week and then we try to figure out uh, different potential crashes so whether there was an actual crash actual crash then second category is near misses whether th there was a uh, 
chance of collision but they barely escaped so near misses and then there is potential crash potential crash so based on the videos uh, there are a lot of techniques that has come that has been um, developed to figure out whether there was an actual crash where there was near misses whether there was pedestrian was involved what kind of vehicles were there where whether they are running the red light whether they are following the different pavement marking or many kind of uh, decisions can be made based on video analytics based safety analysis so that's the third part we will discuss uh, as a part of um, this video series we'll try to split them into different videos but um, predictive safety analysis and descriptive safety analysis has been historically used uh, for majority of projects and there is a there is a lot to discuss in these two compared to surrogate safety uh, which probably would take one one video this kind this is kind of an outline on where we are going so to recap um, crash analysis involves a lot of factors uh, which are vehicles roadways passengers drivers and and, and many other factors and there is a cross combination of factors that makes the roadway roadway studies or roadway safety studies very complex now to handle this complex studies there is a lot of research lot of publications available and there is no end to it also the hundreds of new publications are coming up uh, every year so we need to keep ourselves updated with those publications and th that can make us a very good safety engineer if we want to pursue in our career in the field as a traffic safety expert however for the most engineering work which we do as a part of roadway design work 80% um, of work can be done with the core knowledge that are involved uh, the one thing I did not mention is one of the guidelines for highway safety is HSM highway safety manual published by ASTO so this is a this is a federal guideline and it is a very comprehensive guideline on how to go about doing the safety work from the culture to how to uh, introduce safety in different agencies to network screening and then doing the actual safety work uh, so then there are so many guidelines the next thing we discuss is roadway safety is an interdisciplinary field where there are um, four different emphasis area involved one is engineering education enforcement and emergency response uh, when we go to conferences or when we look through the safety webinars uh, all four um, emphasis area are given a lot of importance so when we are working in the safety project in the engineering field our life is kind of narrowed down to engineering work but that's not the whole picture engineering is a very small part of roadway safety and it's, it's kind of important to remember that there are many other factors that plays in in the roadway safety and usually to come up with a good countermeasures we might have to coordinate with all four uh, different agencies that handle all four sectors so going back to engineering which is a small but important part of roadway safety there are two kind of safety approaches one is nominal safety which is basically meeting the design criteria that are specified in uh, uh, different standards uh, mostly asto green book and MUTCD. and then substantive safety where highway safety manual plays a big role which is which is the coming up with solutions that can reduce the total number of crashes and severity of crashes over the years within the substantive safety approach there are three different approaches one is descriptive safety analysis where we are looking into historical crash data and trying to figure out what went wrong in the past and why crashes were happening second one is predictive safety analysis we can predict the number of crashes for past as well as future so not only future also as past and try to see whether the total crashes that happen in reality were higher or lower than predictions and what can we do uh, to uh, reduce the number of crashes so if we have many solutions then we can predict the impact of those solutions under predictive safety analysis but there are some limitations to it and we need to understand the 
limitations as well then the next one is surrogate safety analysis which is also known as video analytics based safety where we go and record the videos for a minimum of one to uh, usually seven days of data then we try to draw the trajectories of different vehicle in time and space and based on whether those trajectories trajectories are intersecting in time and space that will be actual crash where if those trajectories are separated by a small time difference that would be near miss and then there are potential crashes also in video analytics based safety we also look at the mode type whether there were pedestrian or bicyclists involved whether there was large vehicle involved and let's say we are looking at intersection whether the traffic control is being followed where there is red light running how the traffic is operating where there are chances of rear end crashes and other things so this in a nutshell is what we are going to discuss in the safety analysis in a nutshell this is the core of safety analysis work so the, like I mentioned safety analysis can be an endless field where we can uh, a safety expert needs to learn many things but these are some of the core concept as a at least as a beginner or entry level engineer we need to learn and understand and this should help us to complete 80% of our safety task uh, which we will encounter in our field so we will look at uh, these approaches in detail now 